from every bond and everything that holds them to make them feel that somebody's got some kind of trap that holds them to the point that they can't do nothing without a man. Jesus declares a word. Matter of fact, it ain't Jesus. The word declares over in the book of Numbers. He said, God is not a God that he shall lie. He's not a son of a man that he doesn't have to repent. The commands been given to bless, he cannot reverse it. That's what the word of God says. With those things, God say, he has given you the power to speak and declare and call things that be not what they were. That's what Romans 4 and 17 tells you. It's there. Yeah. It's in your mouth. He said, where's the word? It's in you. It's in your mouth. That's what Romans tells us in that 10, 8, 9. When you learn how to use your mouth and learn how to speak, don't let speak but people speak before you. See, as a kid, when you grow up, you, you, you got you to gotta learn how to grow out of stuff. You, you got to learn how to grow out of shoes. Am I saying that? Amen. You got to know how to grow out of immaturity. You, you know, you know, sometimes people want to keep stuff in the closet just to nostalgia itself. But sometimes you got to grow up out of some stuff. And some of the things you got to grow up out of right now is some of the things you get you dealing with that's going on inside some of these houses today. Mm -hmm. And how people are performing to make you feel like you got it like that. And the word of God says, for those who worship me, we're going to get down here, shall worship me in spirit and truth. Mm -hmm. God declares the word and he says in the book of John 4 and 18, for faith. No, not for, for those who, that's John, that's, that's, that's really what he says about that in the book of uh, uh, Luke 4 and 18. You know, when we get over to this point, but I want, to, I want you to see something in the book of John. For those who worship me must worship me in spirit and truth. Let's move on. Let's, let's get the movie before I get caught up on this thing because I'm already flowing in some stuff and I don't want to get too out of hand. That's why I turn a lot of my stuff in the series because the Holy Ghost just be pouring into you. And you, you can't give all this to you that I'm trying to give you in this little hour that we have. I'm trying to give you so much that, I, that I, I'll give you so much it'll blow your head off. Because I'm trying to get you to see just the just the just the just the relevancy of the scripture. Not because of somebody give you a bunch of Greek words. Just look at the just the basic things. We talked about a couple of weeks ago about how it was basic. Little Red Riding Hood, going through what we seem to be the shadows of the valley of death. And then when she got where she was going, there was somebody waiting there to really kill her. It's called the big bad wolf. And that's the same thing God does to you. You got your little red hood on. You got the word of God saying going through the shadows of the valley of death. And when you get to your destination, the enemy's still there. And he got something right there to knock the wind clean. As soon as you get on praying, he got something to knock the wind clean up out of you. The Bible talks about even the basic things. We talk about the children's Bible. The, the, even the, the yellow brick road, Dorothy, and all this stuff. I'm trying to teach you about some basic stuff. God is trying to get you to use the elementary faith. You ain't got to take people all to the top of, of Aristotle, Socrates. You ain't got to go all over there to make you seem like you're something that you're not. Keep it basic and let the people to understand that the word of God declared according to the Apostle Paul, I'm both based in the bond. If you want to go talk to Obama, then you can talk to him. But look, if you want to deal with the in-between or whatever, the lower class, know how to fluctuate and deal with people on all levels. These things that we read in these kiddie stories are really designed to help you. We talk about the story about the big, the, the, three, the three bears. Them, them, them boys went up in that, them, them bears went up in that place. They, they didn't know what their decision was. And I ate the, the porridge was too hot. Slept in that, 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 that was too big and too little. Why'd that thing go? The porridge was too hot. What, 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 what else they, what they eat, woman of God? The, 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 the bed wasn't soft enough. And so, somehow, then the little one said, well, I found one was just right. The three little pigs. I, I built a straw house. I built a, a wood house. I built a, a brick house. You got to come to a point, you got to go through something to get to where you're going. And when it really came down to the Man. three little pigs, you think about it, they got it all in one house and all of them were safe. See, when you start venturing off and doing things on your own, you build a straw house over there. And the enemy just waiting to huff and puff and blow all your stuff down. And then you want to come right back out of that same situation. And then you want to run your hard head stuff over to a wood house. That's people who just hard headed. Don't even want to listen to the word of God. And then you get right over in the wood house. And then a wolf come along, he blow that thing down, which is the devil. And then all of a sudden, God gets, you got so much that you went through in your life. And I'll say, well, I'm going to build me a house on a solid foundation, which is rock, which takes you back to the word of God over in Luke 6 and 46. When a man builds his house up on a solid foundation, when the winds and the storm beat vehemently against that thing, when the word, when the devil come against you, God said, that's a standard he'll raise in your life. Amen. The woman of God didn't understand what was going on right here. The woman said to him in the 11th verse, woman, that said unto her, sir, that have nothing to draw with. And the well is deep. Come on, somebody. For where is, for where is does I have this living water? Baby, they sure ain't no physical water. Mm -hmm. it, it sure ain't no physical water. Let, 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 let's go over to the book of Corinthians for a minute. Y'all, y'all flip with me for the book of Corinthians for a minute. Let me get over here. Got all this stuff up here and got the. I'm trying to get you to see something here. Well, we're gonna get to the book. Now, let, let, let's I tell you what. Read on your spare time. I'm giving some. I'm giving some homework. Read about the power of the Spirit. 
When you read over in the book of Galatians, take it down in your notes, Galatians chapter 5, verse 16, on down to that 22nd verse. Read over when it talks about the word over in the book of John 4, 24. Read what it talks about the process when God talks about for, for, for those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. Read the word of God in Luke 4 and 18 when Jesus commanded the word, when he got the word of God and it goes over there and around that Luke, I think around that Luke 18, Jesus commanded, he said that I will, for the, the, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. For he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach the deliverance of the captive in the recovering of the sight of the blind. Am I in there anywhere? When you preach the gospel, signs, wonders, and miracles have to take place. You can give all the accolades you want. You can give all the clapping you want. But I'm telling you, the word of God goes right back to John 4, 24. For those who worship me must worship me in spirit and truth. This woman, God, had no idea about what kind of power she was set before. She would claim and give all kind of gyrations about what she couldn't do. And the word of God started telling her, hey, everything you got is right here in front of you. Mm -hmm. The first 12, look at it out here. Are thou greater than that? Look, look, she put a man up in here. Uh, she said in the 12th, are thou greater than our father Jacob? See, that's what people do when they, you know, I ain't going to call nobody ignorant. But I'm just trying to, when they put a man in the position. Jacob was a great man, but he wasn't the source. Am I in there? Amen. He said, are Jacob, are you greater than our father Jacob? which gave us as well, that's a piece of stone with some water in it. You look at the one who can make the stone and provide the water. And the one who created me to come down here. Go back to John 14. I come to do the work of the one who sent me. When you don't understand and recognize power, then you're going to be, you, the Bible said you forever listen and never learn it and never can come to the truth. Amen. You can speak all the good words you want to make people feel accolade. You can put all the pronouncing and all those rhyming words together all you want. But I'm telling you, man and woman, God, for those who worship, must worship me in spirit and truth. When the word of God declared in the creed that he came to preach the gospel and he said over here in that book, eight, in, the, in the book of Luke chapter 18, for the spirit of the Lord, he said about no man. He said not no education. You show me anywhere in the Bible. I, I dare you to try it. You show me anywhere in the Bible you see the disciples talking anything about seminary when they went to college. And I, I, mean, I ain't got no problem. I got to seminary, but I'm trying to get you to see something. This thing is really more than what you can see. Paul breaks that thing down in Corinthians, and he makes it very clear that, that the eyes have not seen and the ears have not heard. Neither has it entered the heart of any man the things that God has prepared for them that love him. Am I, am I, am I getting you know, I'm not that with y'all? See, when you got to read the word, you'll understand the word. Hold on, hold on a second. Give, give me that Bible right there. Y'all bear with me. Y'all bear with me just a moment. Y'all bear with me just a moment. Take your Bibles here. Look, look at this. Take your Bibles. I want you to look at something here. I want you to look at something here. Look at your Bibles. I want you to go to the book of Bibles. I want you to go to 1 Corinthians. Now, I know, I know Pastor Ellis is it's kind of it's, it's lengthy on some stuff, but that's why I speak in the series. Go to the book of Corinthians. Take your Bibles with me. Turn to the book of Corinthians. And let's look at 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And let's look at something in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Let me get, let me get, my, let me get my goggles on here. If I can make sure when I read, I'm making sure I know what I'm reading. The word of God. Now, but this is the vision between what the woman of God is dealing with at the well. And not being able to recognize the power of the spirit. Which sometimes and most of the time most of us run into. Now, when we look back over in the word of God and we look over in the book of uh, John four, the woman said unto her, sir, that has nothing to draw with right there. She, she, she went into an ignorant state. She, she was unaware about what the power of God was doing because she had no discernment. And the first thing to come out of her mouth, she talked about a man th that gave her something. You look at the 12 verse. He said, out our greater. See, she hadn't, she had no way to recognize the power before her because she didn't understand. Because if she knew, if she would have knew, she wouldn't have said what she said in the twelfth verse. I, 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 are you greater than Jacob that gave us his well to drink from, his children, and his cattle? It's a bunch of cows, all kind of infested disease coming up out that thing. You, you, you drinking what a cows drink from? And I ain't saying that they ain't, you know, that's what they had to do back then. But look here, sometimes you got to be careful what you drink from and who you drinking with. Now, she said something when you think about it here. Th this is not normal. This is not sanitary. But back in those days, you know, hey, you know, what can we say? It was a little bit more pure than today. She says in the 12th verse, Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well and drink thereof, himself, his children, his cattle. You, 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 infections, the Bible said that infectious disease 
of people's going to kill half of the world. That's what the word of God say. We're looking at everything. It's diseases now. We got out here, and some people are keeping up with it. It's more diseases out here that we can't even control. The effects and disease center over in Africa, if you look into that stuff, it's diseases out there you can't even control that men even heard about. I'm trying to get you to get some basic understanding about what God is saying that's happening in the world today. And he's trying to get you to see it's really more that you just run with some bricks and some mortar. Ain't nothing wrong with going to church. Ain't nothing wrong with you having a good, strong leader. But that leader ain't going to lead you to the promised land. Jesus said, well, God said, according to the book of Numbers, that Moses was meek in all his house. Then everybody, all the apostles, all the disciples, all of them, he said he didn't speak to him in dark, small twin places or in visions and dreams. He spoke to that brother face to face. And then Miriam come over there in the 12th verse and she's going to put her mouth on that prophet. And God had to deal with her. Let, let me move on here. Let me move over there. Jesus answered and said in the verse 13, said unto her, whoever drinketh, E-T-H, come on now, of this water shall thirst again. Listen to what he's saying. The natural water. Hmm. Can I make it plain to you? You drink men's philosophies. You drink men's scholars. You drink men's books. You drink that stuff. And you don't go before God and hear what the true word of God is saying. But you see, we see, see, we as Christians, we become spiritually obese. We, we don't want to get out and do nothing no more. We want somebody to hand something to us. Which I look at this right here in the book of John, uh, John 4 and 13. And it really leads me over to the book of Corinthians. Now I'm going to just jump this Corinthians in there right quick because I want you to see something here. In the book of Corinthians, See, this, this ain't man's theology. This ain't no seminary. This is, this is spiritual. So you can't look this up with what you feel that you need to hook up with. This is the Holy Ghost speaking. And the word of God says right here, in, look at 1 Corinthians, the second chapter, ninth verse. But it is written, right there, it's already been notated. It's been notated. It has been written spiritually. Why he said it's been written spiritually? Because it's been written. The, the reason you got to know it's been written spiritually because your eyes ain't even ever seen it yet. <laughs> you know, you don't want to you want to work with me on this. I, he said, "Eyes have not seen." Now, spiritual writing ain't illumination to man until it comes to confirmation. God is writing things about you in the spirit that He knew before you was even born. That's what He said in Jeremiah one and five. Come on, woman, God, you got to help me up in here. Amen. The Bible said there's things that He got to show you that man don't even know nothing about. Listen to me. But it is written that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. Neither have it entered to the heart. You ain't even born yet, and God got in store for, for you. You don't even know nothing. You go to a couple of universities. That's why I say you look at this, you look at them, them disciples. You, you show me anyone in the Bible that went to the University of Michigan, they went to the University of Texas, USC, Baylor, whatever, whatever you want to Michigan, whatever you want. You don't see nowhere when they went to any kind of university. The Bible declared the creed that everything they got was through the Spirit. Now I'm gonna show you right here. He said, For those who worship me. In the book of John, must worship me in spirit and truth. That's John 4, 24. But notice how the spirit moves here in collaboration with the power of God. And when you're walking in pure illumination, it ain't got no education to be in anywhere. You, it, it, I mean, the, the, the Bible wasn't wrote on education. The Bible said it was incited through the spirit for them to write the men's. The holy writings came through the spirit. Look at here. Look at look over here in, in this in this second chapter, in the first in this first Corinthians second chapter. But it is written that eyes have not seen, neither ears heard, neither has entered to the heart of any man the things that God, that God has in store for them that love him. But look what it says. For God has revealed it by the Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yet the deepest things of God. Now, Jesus just said over there, all the healing. Let me just stop this a minute. Jesus said over there, over there, right over there in Luke 4, all the healing, everything he come to do is through the Spirit. Look at John 4 and 18. He said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me the heal, but the brokenhearted to preach the deliverance to the captive, recovering the sight of the, look at all that healing, the sight of the blind set free to liberty to those who abuse and look to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. You can read on down and keep on going. Jesus handed the book back to them boys and said, they looked like something was wrong with them. Those Pharisees, those wonder what they changed in the right pocket. 
Those ones that got those large chalachapies on. Those ones that got rings on their finger. Those ones who wear colored shirts, got full cars, and think they're a little bit better than you are. See, they want to set themselves above you. See, tradition and man-made religion been killing the church ever since. It, it's still killing the church. Man is all.